Welcome everyone to Mail Fuzz TV. I am Peter and that is Tara. We are going to talk about Quantum Leap Season 1, Episode 12. It is called Let Them Play. So, full spoilers for the episode. Uh, and apologies, this is a week late. I actually put a, a comment on, on the YouTube saying we'll double up this week because we missed last week uh, due to Tara moving and some complications afterwards. Uh, only to find out this week when I went to watch my two episodes that there was only one because there wasn't an episode last night. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. They could have just had the week off last week when we couldn't record. No? Was that, was that too inconvenient <laughs> for them? But and it's only off for one week. It's back next week. So I, I don't know why the one week off is happening. I, like, Super Bowl aftermath or something? I, I was totally expecting a Valentine's Day themed episode. Yeah, this no, week. no. Um, Nothing. Oh. And it could have went that way, maybe, with where he ends up at the end of this one. You know, he's in a restaurant. That could end, lead to a romantic thing. People have romantic nights in restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he's really excited about being a chef. Oh, he's into it, yeah. I hope he knows that he has some vague idea what he's doing, because he's in the middle of the chaos of everything, and he's just, like chopping, and people are like barking orders and throwing things yeah. in pots and stuff. He's probably watched a lot of Kitchen Nightmares, and he's like, I'm ready, chef. Put me in. <laughs> hey, I've seen the menu. I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm ready to critique and dissect how he interacts with his chef. Unless he is the head chef. Mm-hmm. What if someone comes up to him and goes, yes, chef, at the start of the next episode? <laughs> then they, too, will have watched Kitchen Nightmares. <laughs> yeah, so... So, yes, we jump straight to the where he jumped to at the end. That's the first time I think we've done that. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. I blame you. What? <laughs> so, yes, uh, this episode is set in 2012, uh, which, before we get, because obviously there's a very serious topic to discuss when we get to like the actual meat of this episode, but before we get to that, I want to point out that I feel like they put more effort into making this feel like 2012 than they have any other time period. And I think it's because all the writers were, like, alive <laughs> during 2012. So there was lots of little things like, uh, you know, Call Me Maybe playing at one point. Um, Angry Birds got <laughs> referenced. It's like, oh, we know what to reference because we lived it. We were there. We know what 2012 was. Yeah, I guess. It's hard for me to say for sure because it's all kind of a it's just like yesterday yeah it doesn't feel <laughs> that long me. ago but it's 11 years ago so i mean that's that's a little I bit i was looking at the cars during the car wash scene i'm like did they get all the cars right I'm like okay i see a I see a volkswagen uh a bug sure sure convertible uh, bug there was one weird line for me in though uh they said something was iconic before we said that and i'm like what are you talking about iconic's not like this new term but people said iconic before i guess that yeah I, I never really thought about it i thought the principal had a weird line it wasn't like talk to the hand but it was something kind of similar <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that it was like a catchphrase or something all oh, right okay i was gonna say talk to the hand would be a bit uh out of date because i talked to the yeah. hand was like terminator like 90s, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe maybe you're right maybe more like 2000s well, I mean, Terminator 3 might have been late with its reference. I just remember Doc Talk to the Hand from a pivotal Terminator 3 scene. <laughs> Talk to the Hand. <laughs> Nailed it. So, yeah. Just, just <laughs> getting that out of the way first. I wanted to mention it. Uh, so, this episode, of course, is about a trans character who is the, the daughter of who Ben leaps into. And he is this basketball coach, girls basketball coach at high school. And the episode naturally goes down the, the, the rabbit hole of the reactions to this daughter being put in the game. G is her name. And yeah, so it, it, it's dealing with that. Um, it, so I feel bad critiquing this episode because obviously the message is very genuine and it obviously means a lot to people involved and it's obviously a very heartfelt intention. Uh, but I will critique it and say that I feel like it kind of forgets to be an episode of the tv show and just kind of becomes about the message instead to, to mm -hmm. almost to a detrimental degree uh, and the scene that i would really point to in bringing this up i've got a few other things to, to poke at but the scene that i would really bring up there's a scene where they go to a support group where, where gia goes with and she hangs out with other other trans kids and the parents are talking and there's a point where one of the parents is talking about the, their kids and about the struggles of being a parent of a trans kid 
and it starts doing this thing where it focuses on the faces of the kids but they're looking directly at the camera and it's it, it's kind of breaking the fourth wall and this sad mm-hmm. music's playing and it just kind of felt like i was watching like a special that they would show in school rather than an episode of quantum leap so i mm-hmm. I, th- I think it maybe gets a little bit over uh i don't know i, I feel like they're they're attention just kind of it went up like, to... a, like a dharma produced video <laughs> yeah it, it was kind of weird like, darman whatever what, that youtuber guy is he makes cringe videos when it hit that scene i, I just kind of felt like pulled out of it and i was like okay like this is all nice yeah, that was a surprising uh, director's choice i suppose for that yeah. moment it's like when i got to that scene i was like okay this is all nice but i, I kind of feel like i'm not watching an episode with a story anymore i'm just kind of watching a special about this subject and i think the way it progressed beyond that point where I felt like Ben's inclusion never even feel like it... Like, he makes one small decision that effectively changes the course of what happens in the past. And I kind of felt like, that just kind of makes the parents look like shit from before, if, if they never thought of this, because it's not that much of a leap. Uh, no pun intended, because, you know, mm-hmm. pun on leap. Uh, yeah, all, all he really does is sort of predict that she might have ran away to one specific person, and it didn't feel like... You know, I didn't feel like the the parent or the dad who was there in his place would have like not had that information. So that that's basically all he contributes. So even his leap doesn't feel like it really affects that much of the the proceedings either. So it feels kind of strange to me as an episode of TV, even with all its obviously really good intentions in place. Um, I actually really liked this episode a lot. Um. I thought it was a very uh, moving episode and, you know, it, it is very, you know, heavy with its message, but it's definitely like a message that is very relevant to today, especially the whole discussion about uh, trans kids in school and sports teams. Um, there's also like the uh, prospect of them, of her being like picked up maybe for uh, a scholarship program because there's like scouts there and stuff. But um, so it seems like, yeah, it's it's a bit like um, very heavy on the message, and to the point where you do kind of you know the the leap part kind of gets put aside. But I don't know. I think of all the episodes to do it, it seems like the most appropriate one because this is the first time they've really delved into this kind of thing, at least this heavy handedly. Yeah, yeah, it, it's frustrating because, it, like, I understand that the subject probably needs to be very blunt in its messaging because the world kind of needs it to be blunt. Like, <laughs> no, no one's really going to argue that <laughs> right now. Um, yeah. But at the same time, it does kind of feel like it, it takes away from just, like, being an episode of this, the show. Like, I, I think, for me, what would have been more effective would be just telling the story about a trans kid and making me care about the character and having, like, the effects sort of, like, play out. Whereas, it felt like it was kind of going down a checklist of things that it wanted to mention and point out. Mm-hmm. Uh, rather than like telling a story where everything kind of fit naturally into it um i thought the daughters sometimes made decisions that i thought were a bit confusing when she would just turn on her parents really quickly even though uh especially with ben there they've you know they've both been really supportive um or the things that seem kind of like not as big of a deal like she just like would uh i don't know like flip out but I guess I just don't remember what it's like to be a teen anymore. <laughs> also, <laughs> eons ago, <laughs> it was a long time ago, and I would cry over anything. So maybe, maybe I'm just misremembering. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't seem like it's, it's not like her, the dad was like a, an asshole, and then Ben was there to be better. It, it kind of sounds like the dad was pretty supportive, and you know, even took no, the job at the school because his daughter was there. It does sound like that the dad was, you know, just wanting what was best for the family and doing what the mom and him discussed or the principal and him discussed. And they're like, okay, we can do this, but there are rules. And instead of uh, treating their daughter as a daughter, they have to treat them, you know, as a special case. And, you know, it's, it's not making her feel like she's really included in anything. Yeah. Um, you know, it brings up, obviously, getting changed in the girls' locker room, and that's like a, a, a point that it brings up. Uh, it, it brings up kind of the, the reaction to people when she's put in the game. We find out later in the episode that she was... It was agreed that she could be on the team, but with the understanding that she would never actually be put into the game, so she'd always just be on the bench. And that's actually what sets her off later in the episode and makes her run away for a little bit. Um, but um, that that's kind of the... the 
and that's really most of the main story to be honest like obviously there's some specific moments to kind of point out and uh conversations between ben and the and the mom or uh like the car wash scene where she gets harassed by guys throwing eggs and she throws a wrench and it hits like the the karen's you know car yeah <laughs> that's what i'm gonna CGI, call her um <laughs> A CGI break on the windshield. <laughs> I laughed though because you, you can't throw a wrench at anything now without me thinking if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> like my mind's just. I mean, not... I don't think it was a wrench. I think it was like a squeegee or something. <laughs> was it? It looked why heavier than squ- that. Why would they have a wrench at a at a car wash? I mean, that's a fair point. That's a fair <laughs> point. Maybe I just wanted it to be a wrench because I wanted to think about dodgeball. <laughs> 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 I mean, all. I think I think it was important that Ben was there for the leap because otherwise the father was just sort of doing what everyone else, what the majority said to do instead of like actually getting involved and like saying, no, we're, I'm just going to put her, put her up to play. And no, I, I'm going to okay. stand by what's right, you know. Oh, so you think at the start, because Ben, as soon as he leaps in, he immediately makes the choice to put her in, not knowing any of the context. He just sees that one of the players is injured and says, you, and he doesn't even know it's his daughter yet uh, or anything. Um, yeah. So you're saying that if Ben didn't leap there, that the dad wouldn't have made that choice. He would have somehow talked around Well, I think it. Addison says that directly yeah. to him. Oh, well, you're right, you're right. I, yeah, you're right, she does, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I suppose that's fair. It, it kinda... And same with the end, also with getting her to play in the, you know, the the game that might lead them to regionals. I think it felt less relevant to me as the episode was going on, because normally in the episode, like su- such a big, th- a driving force of Quantum Leap, in this show particular, uh, versus the old one. Although the old one's the same, but like the episodes always kind of become about trying to figure out what it is I need to do or what it is I need to fix. What it is it? And it felt like that conversation was completely removed this time. It was just kind of. Uh, just going through it effectively. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was kind of a strange episode, and I, I think it kind of, you know, it has they had a little bit of that very special episode kind of kind of vibe oh, from, yeah. from, from from the the olden days. Uh, <laughs> which again, like I think the message obviously is very heartfelt and sincere, and it obviously it like it's got the best of intentions. I just think it kind of they didn't actually integrate it into a, a, a an actual story of an episode rather than just kind of made a, a message and then just kind of duct taped the show around it <laughs> effectively yeah yeah okay um it's actually kind of a storyline that i was expecting to see from the original series and i can't remember if it's something that ever comes up about like like sam um leaping into a trans person i don't think so um there are some episodes i fell asleep during yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe i'm misremembering but well, t- i mean this still hasn't done that i mean he leaves it into hasn't, the dad. and i i sort of thought it was going to i guess i just don't remember the uh the synopsis um but um it's still dealing with the issue and i think that we're going to you know it's still open to doing that in the future but maybe it would be best to like be uh of ben being a third party you know and just being supportive and then maybe later on we get more of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's something, you know, right from the, the get-go when we were talking about the concept of what this show is, we said that it kind of lent itself to maybe exploring that because the whole point of, like, the, the, whole, the whole premise of the show is that a character leaps into someone else's body mm-hmm. uh, but isn't really them. Like, you know, there's kind of like a natural, like, yeah, branch absolutely. to go on with that. Which is, yeah, which is why I think even when I was watching the original show, I was like, I was just kind of waiting for that episode to happen. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of does happen with this in the, in the B storyline. Oh, yeah, I'm, I was saving that. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Which, so, one of the things we have to talk about with the, with the other stuff, so obviously Ian uh, f- feels connected to this. And it, it does bring up as well that Ian's memory is altered immediately. When, that was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, when Addison comes out and says, hey, this all happened, Ian is immediately saying, oh, I remember Gia. Gia was great. You know, she was iconic, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, that's what just changed. Like, that wasn't what it was before. So this this <laughs> memory you have of this kind of, not famous, but, you know, semi-well-known person is completely something that's just happened because Ben changed something in the past. Yeah, so, and they're like, oh, I've been bested by my own technology or something yeah something like that that's <laughs> this is the line but the the iconic before we said iconic came up and i was like what are we talking about <laughs> people said iconic yeah anyway um so obviously ian goes into their past talks about c- trying to commit suicide as a, a young uh, 
teen or even preteen, I think may have been the age. And obviously it's a touching conversation between between Ian and Addison, uh, but it leads to something very important f- in terms of mechanics for the show later on, which was a total what the F moment for me, when Addison just invites Ian into the into the chamber to to watch the basketball game which obviously is touching because it's something that uh, matters to Ian but I'm like they can just do that they can just have <laughs> anyone go in there and be the hologram are you shitting me I thought I thought like Addison no. could only do it because <laughs> she she had like a you know like not so much that they had to like take like DNA from her or something but the idea that she had to there's do a, a lot of, link. yeah yeah there's a lot going on to but anyone can go in and just kind of Okay, so... Be in the past? Okay, is it okay if I explain how it worked in the original show? I think I've already done it. So it yeah. It's not going to spoil anything. I mean, if it's relevant, it's relevant, so... Yeah, so in the original show, obviously Al and Sam have the neural link. So only Al can go in and speak to Sam. But if someone else goes into the, you know, into the chamber, what do they see? Um, well, they see what Al's seen. And possibly hear what Al's seen. But they don't have a link with with Sam, so Sam can't see them unless okay. Al is touching them. If Al is touching them, then they can see whoever he's touching, but he can't hear them. Well, I, I didn't think anyone could just go in and watch the past like this either. So that's that was still a surprise to me. Yeah, from well from the uh from the pilot episodes, which is the only time we ever really get the perspective of Addison inside the the chamber, um, uh, it's we, it does look kind of like a holodeck, cause you know, kind of uh, fades away or in part in pieces, right? Mm. When she loses the connection. So I imagine, yeah, I imagine it's the same thing. Like I kept, I kept looking to see, I'm like, oh, that's cute because she could bring in Ian, and so long as she's like holding his hand or his arm or whatever. Sorry, there, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. So long as she's holding their hand or their arm. You know, they would be able to see everything, but not be able to communicate with Ben. Okay. That's come out of nowhere for me. I mean, it was kind of a... Uh, it actually was one of the, the little storytelling beats of the episode that I thought was quite smart in the sense that what's revealed in the very next scene kind of linked back to it in a weird way, uh, which we'll get to. So the B-plot is uh, Magic and Jen going to investigate someone that they believe Ben spoke to before he, you know, leapt, before he made his choices to do what he did. And this woman yeah. has no idea what they're talking about. Uh, but when they mention the date, it kind of sparks something and she's a little bit weirded out. So she says, come back for the slam poetry thing that we're doing tomorrow. Uh, so we get scenes of Jen enduring slam poetry. And I have to admit, I was with Jen on this. Uh, like, we see it at the end of the previous <laughs> one and it ends with like, and yes... I called her Toast. And <laughs> I'm sitting there going, oh my god, like, I hate this. <laughs> what are I you love talking that Magic's about? like... Like being polite and doing the thing. Oh, but... <laughs> no, 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 no. It is like nuclear cringe. Can, can I just... <laughs> like, I, I am a... I am what one might call a fairly pretentious movie fan. I love David Lynch. I love art house films. I love that shit. I hate <laughs> this slam poetry <laughs> nonsense it's nonsense <laughs> uh, i like the next poem well yeah the next one obviously had like some clear hidden meanings for the show which you know would made it more interesting but the, the end of this previous one was like oh my god you're just you're making me realize why i hate this so much but uh yeah so it basically talks about like you know someone else is in you know inside in control but there's a face of another blah 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 and like magic's kind of perking up and i do like this detail i like that magic's the one that recognizes what this is because magic of course as we know from his past has been leapt into so he recognizes that what this person is describing is what he's also went through so the end of the episode the big reveal from this b plot is that ben did come and talk to this person but when he came and talked to this person, it wasn't really her. There was someone else in the driver's seat. It was someone who leapt from the future. And we find out that she's been seeing dreams of whoever this is in her head. And she's drawn them. Uh, or them. Or, well, I was kind of spoiling it because I made that correction. But they, <laughs> they, they've drawn who this person is. Uh, and we see it. And obviously right before, I'm like, oh, it's going to be Leaper X. It's going to be Leaper X, right? I, I was expecting to see, see, see Leaper X. And instead... It looks a lot like Ian. That's just mm-hmm. who it is. 
So at some point in the future, it looks like Ian is going to be leaping, and that potentially Ian themselves is actually the one who told Ben something and convinced him to leap in the first place. Meaning that all of these say characters were like, why did Ben do this to us and leap? Some of you might have told him to. <laughs> from the future. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of a thing we predicted last time. Where it would at least be someone that we knew. I thought it was going to be Addison. Sure, but, yeah, yeah. But I, I was certain it was going to be somebody that we that, already knew. Well, this is why I thought it was neat that they did the, the taking Ian into the, the past with the hologram thing. Because <laughs> that felt like, to me, it was establishing, oh, we're seeing Ian use some of the tech in a way that we've not done before. And is maybe like yeah. breaking some of the rules. And then immediately the next scene is like, no, no, all the rules are going to be broken because Ian's going to be leaping at some point. Like, Right. So, But they may be leaping to warn ben right because they want them to change the whatever the future is where addison dies so it could be that they're doing this out of desperation oh, and not yeah. actually going to leap in the future which i don't know how that's gonna work but i like it <laughs> well they're gonna leap at least once but yeah i get what you're saying it could be like a desperate one-time move but that said though like Ben leapt, and then now he's stuck leaping. Like, in fact, every case example we have so far, Sam and Ben, once they started leaping, they could not stop leaping. They're like Pringles. That's true. Once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> but, I mean, if Ian leapt into the past to try to change it, then maybe they won't have to in the future because Ben leapt when he did. Oh, that's going to enter some timey wimey uh, questions. That I don't yeah, think but Quantum Leap can do that. I mean, it can do that, but it's not like... <laughs> I mean, that could be a balls away to end the whole show, is that one of the leaps that Ben does ends up stopping the reason that he ever has to leap in the first place, so it just kind of erases the entire show. They could end awesome. the show like that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That, hey, that's what you do. you do. You do a title card at the end of the show... Doctor, Doctor Ben, never had to go home. <laughs> eh? Eh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty funny. It was all the dream. Well, no, it's not a dream. It's, it's, not, it's an alternate universe that never happened because of a leap. No, no, you're 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 ruining the 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 intricacies and the, the nuance <laughs> of it. it. It's it's. But uh, the old show never had to explain any of its complicated the. Um, rules <laughs> just like figure it out audience uh, you're fans you can you know work with it i think there's a healthy balance of uh of dealing with this stuff uh yeah. and i expect i'm going to really like the rest of the original show when we get around to going back to it but mm -hmm. i do think the one thing that i'll say is maybe a little missing is like oh a more concrete set of like rules by the end you know i think some of the the clear flippy flopping between things would have decided to change rules between seasons is going to going to irk me somewhat well you know you got to keep things fresh <laughs> that's not an excuse for that no that's what makes it exciting like okay you get like one two three seasons with rules <laughs> maybe bend them a little that's what makes it exciting no bending them is okay we go a little, we go a little no, no, bit no. outside the rules no no, no. <laughs> no bending them is okay if the characters are making that choice and there's consequences for those rules being bent i've got a feeling though that they're just going to be bending willy-nilly with no reason or rhyme. But wouldn't it be exciting? Like, what kind of what kind of a leap do you, would you want to see if you could bend the rules a little? <laughs> Obviously, I always wanted a future leap, but that never happened. Which is why I think this show is doing it, because I think a lot of people watching were like, what if he leaps in the future? I think he's... Well, they're building up to it. That's what they're saying he's trying to do. That's what their theory yeah. is right now. Um, I want to see him leap into... An animal. I want, I want, an, I want a babe pig in the city episode where he's in like a pig, <laughs> and That'd he's still, be awesome. and he's still Ben. He's still smart, and he can still talk to Addison because she's linked to him, but he can't talk to anyone who's in that time period because obviously he's a pig. So you would be okay with that? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you may have to explain a little bit how he's able to do that, but uh, yeah, in theory, I could be okay with it. Cool. Wait, is there an episode of the original show where he was into an animal? Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil anything <laughs> if you guys are nosy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. What about, like, um, what if you leapt into Bigfoot? 
That's, that's not an episode of the original show, is it? <laughs> no. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. That's, it's that's... so exciting to talk about the show. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you'd already seen it. We're getting to. We'll get to it. when this goes on. Uh, this goes on break. Uh, just as for everyone keeping up with all the the stuff we do, a lot of our classic shows are on going on pause for a little bit because uh, we got new Quantum Leap and we also have new Star Trek Picard uh, starting this <sighs> week. So we'll see how that last season goes. But anyway, I suppose that'll wrap up uh, our thoughts on this uh, Quantum Leap. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I I really like the game at the end. I don't know. I got kind of into it, and I was really proud of them. <laughs> I thought it, it. I thought it became actually a really good sports episode. Uh, I never really got that feeling. I will say I did like the idea that the Karen character, like her daughter, ended up being like she was kind of like salty about things early on, but kind of came around. That the idea right, be- because it- she was listening to her the older generation, right? But when she was actually with her peers and with Gia, like she really didn't know what the right thing was and just went along with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the way I was going to phrase it was that it shows that like, the new generation has a bit, you know, better hope. But yeah, basically, yeah, you said it more or less still yeah. right. Um, so yeah, yeah, uh, that was, that was a fine detail uh, that, that worked, I think. So yeah, I thought it was really sweet and I got, I got into the actual sports thing and I was really happy for them that they made regionals. And maybe I liked um, Addison and Ian in the, the stands also, like, having genuine reactions to the to the game. I thought that was really fun. Hmm. Okay, well, there you go. That's uh, that quite yeah, a leap. Good episode. I, I also like that oh. the leap happened in mid-cheer. <laughs> <laughs> From Ben. That made me laugh. Sure. Uh... Hey, maybe yeah. next episode will just be like a cooking show episode. It'll just, it'll just be him cooking and trying to make the best dish... And then once he perfects that, uh, you know, grilled salmon at the end. It would be so great if it was actually (laughs) Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares that he left into. (laughs) Oh, that'd be a hell of a crossover if there was a fictional version. It's rotten! (laughs) A fictional version of Kitchen Nightmares that he leaps into. That that, that actually would be a really wacky crossover. Yeah, Uh, and I'm looking forward to what happens next with with Ian. Because obviously they have to let them know, like, what's what's going on. I don't, th- I, I don't know if magic in general tell them. No? I don't know. I think magic may keep this close to the chest. Well, maybe, well, if they tell, if they both tell uh, Janice, maybe she's like, this is why I couldn't tell you guys and why you can't know anything is because obviously you're all involved some way <laughs> in the future and you don't want to know right now, you know? Hmm. And then they're like, yeah, okay, we won't tell you. <laughs> right. there you go that's uh, quite a leap from this week oh, well actually not, I tell a lie it's quite a leap from last week because uh, we couldn't record last week but uh, yeah we'll be back next week with uh, the the new episode and we'll be back later this week with uh, Star Trek Picard so look forward to those things uh, <laughs> so let us know you thought this episode in the comments below like subscribe ding the bell for notifications all that stuff Get us on the, the Twitters for mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. And of course, if you want to support all the content, you can head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv and support us over there and keep all the content coming. Uh, but yeah, uh, that is the episode. That is us. Thank you very much once again. We'll see you next time. Keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla?